JSON, JavaScript Object Notation. It's a small, lightweight data format. A packet of JSON data is almost identical to a Python dictionary. It is shorter than XML and can be quickly parsed by browsers since it uses JavaScript syntax. This makes JSON an ideal format for transporting data between a client and a server. If your client is not a browser, don't worry. Android and other mobile operating systems all come equipped with tools for parsing and working with JSON. Today, I will show you how to use Python's JSON library to send and receive JSON data packets. We'll have a ton of fun with JSON, sent from my ray guns. Pew pew! Here is a typical JSON data packet. Notice how it looks just like a Python dictionary, with a few exceptions. True and false are not capitalized in JSON, while in Python they are. And instead of none, you use the JavaScript value null. This JSON object contains examples of all possible data types. All the keys are strings, but the values can be strings. Numbers, booleans, a list, null, or even another JSON object. Now compare this with the XML version. The increased size of XML data is largely due to the end tags repeating the text of the opening tags. A popular sport is debating the merits of JSON versus XML. But instead of arguing, I recommend you learn the pros and cons of both formats, then choose the one which is best for your project. Let's now learn how to use the JSON module in Python. First, let's save the sample JSON data to a text file. Notice the cinematographer's name contains a non-ASCII character. For this reason, we will save this text file using UTF-8 encoding. Begin by importing the JSON module. Next, let's look at the methods in this module. Today we will focus on the load and dump methods. The load method allows you to load JSON data from a file, while the load s method enables you to load JSON data from a string. That's why there's an s at the end of the method name, s for string. The dump method will write JSON data to a file, and the dump s method will output a string in proper JSON format. Let's see some examples. First, we will load the JSON data from the file we created earlier. Using the open function, the first argument is the path to the file. For the second argument, let's pass r, since we are only reading the data. Next, specify the encoding as UTF-8, since this data contains non-ASCII characters. Now that we have opened the file, we can load the JSON data using the load method. After loading the JSON data, close the file. If you display the object, you will see a dictionary containing all the data. If you look at the type, you will see it is, in fact, a dictionary. Also notice how the true, false, and null values from the file were correctly parsed into Python, true, false, and none values. And the non-ASCII character was correctly parsed. If you look up the 142 Unicode character, it is a lowercase l with a stroke. Because this is a dictionary, you can access the data by key. We can see the title, the list of actors, and so on. You use the load s function if your JSON data arrives in the form of a string. This is common in client-server applications where data is sent over the net. As an illustration, let's create a string with a JSON formatted value. To parse this JSON data, call the load s function. Since all characters are ASCII, there is no need to worry about encoding. If you look at the result, we have a valid Python dictionary with all data properly converted. False is a Python Boolean, and null was converted to none. Suppose you want to store the data about Gattaca in a database or send it to a remote user. To convert this dictionary into a valid JSON string, you use the dump s method. When you call the method, simply pass in the dictionary. The result is a string in proper JSON format. Notice that true and false are both lowercase, and none was converted to null. There is an unusual double stroke for the non-ASCII character, however. This is because the JSON library assumes you want the output to be ASCII, and will escape all non-ASCII characters. To avoid this and allow Unicode characters in your string, call dump s and set ensure ASCII to false. The non-ASCII character is now preserved, and the backslash is not escaped. Let's now create a new object, convert it to JSON, and write it to a file. We start by creating a dictionary. For this example, we will use data for the movie Minority Report. Directed by Steven Spielberg, with a soundtrack by John Williams, this is a must-see movie for any Python programmer. The cinematographer is Janusz Kaminski. The N in his last name has an accent with a Unicode value 
of 144. To write this to a file in JSON format, we must first open a file in write mode with UTF-8 encoding. Next, call the dump method. The first argument is the dictionary. Now, pass in the file. Remember to set ensure ASCII to false since our data contains non-ASCII characters. Finally, close the file. If we open the file, we see all the data is there. Everything is properly formatted and the Unicode characters are all accounted for. Please wait for an incoming message from Socratica. This JSON says Patreon helps Python to carry on. And since rhyming sentences are twice as likely to be true as ordinary ones, this message must be as good as gold. Which is what we are asking for, if you have some to spare. <laughs>